Hey there Windowers and welcome to another episode of Windows on Windows, part of the series on the development of Windows 8. In this episode we'll be taking a look at Windows 8 build 7973, a milestone 3 build compiled on the 30th of March 2011. And strap yourselves in because in the 3 months since build 7899 a lot has happened, so if you're ready to see a treasure trove of changes in both the desktop and Windows 8's new touch optimised UI, let's take a look and let's start. So here we are at the desktop of Windows 8 build 7973 and before we get started as usual I want to draw your attention back to the setup procedure that I showed at the beginning of the video and ladies and gentlemen it is my pleasure to announce that setup is no longer lost the words. That's right the bug that was causing some text strings in setup to be truncated has now finally and not a moment too soon been fixed. I'm sure you also noticed that in this build we have a new boot screen introduced and whilst at the moment it shows an image of a beta fish, which in case you haven't already guessed is a pun on the word a beta, the overall design is very similar to what would be seen in the final release of Windows 8, including a new loading circle and welcome text, although the latter would be removed before the final release. And before we delve in deeper into the new and changed features in this build, this is a good time to talk a bit about build numbers because this build 7973 is not the only build 7973. In fact, there are at least four builds 7973. And if you're now feeling slightly confused, don't panic as I'm going to try and explain this very briefly. Now, you may have noticed that Windows builds, even though commonly referred to just by numbers, actually have a whole string of information in their names. And this is known as their build tag. Now, now for the 7973 builds you'll see that even though they share the same build number the rest of their names differ and this is because during the development of any version of Windows developers get split up into teams that focus on a particular part of the system. Now each team can also be made up of smaller sub teams so taking this build 7973's full build tag as an example we can see that this build was compiled at 6.09 p.m. on the 30th of March 2011 by the NPC sub team of the kernel subteam of the core one team who were compiling feature build lab or FBL builds. Now labs were originally physical rooms where Windows builds were compiled however by the time of Windows 8 physical build labs had been mostly superseded by virtual ones that is to say builds at this point could be compiled anywhere and not necessarily in one specific place. So the lab name is an indication of which part of the system the teams within were working on. For example, all teams compiling feature build lab builds were working on one or more features for the new OS. And put simply, the way Windows development works is that each subteam compiles their code changes into a build, and these code changes will then be what is called reverse integrated up to the team above them. So, for example, the MPC subteam here will have compiled a build based on their code changes, i.e., this build 7973 and these code changes will have then been reverse integrated up into the kernel team's code and compiled into a build again. And then the kernel team's collection of code changes inherited from all their sub teams will have been integrated up into the core one team's code and compiled yet again. And a similar process would have happened with all the other 7973 builds, just with a different set of teams focusing on coding different parts of the OS and by chance using the same build numbers. Finally, if the code changes were desirable and passed quality checks, they would be integrated up into the main Windows code, at this time known as WinMain, which could then be used to compile feature complete builds such as RTM builds or service packs. Coming back to the desktop then, and this build showcases many changes here on the desktop, and the most obvious one, which I'm sure you've already noticed, is that we now have a new wallpaper. Now, this wallpaper seems to have been introduced in or around Bill 7910 from the 11th of January 2011, and is a bit unusual in the sense that it's not simply a wallpaper, but also a form of puzzle called a wordaku. Now this works just like Sudoku, just with letters instead of numbers, and its purpose here was to reveal a hidden phrase in the highlighted squares for anyone that 
managed to A, work out that it was a puzzle in the first place, and B, was then able to solve it. For the purposes of the video, I won't go through the actual solving of the puzzle, but suffice it to say, the answer is RSZQSLDTO, which is a code for a well-known phrase related to a well-known version of Windows. And I won't spoil it for you if you're playing along at home, but if you think you can crack the code, leave a comment below and it'll be interesting to see how many people can work it out. Another change you may have noticed on the desktop is that the font bug that was causing some text to display as Arial rather than Sego UI has now been fixed, and this also came in build 7910. If we now have a look at Winver, you'll see that the copyright date has now changed from 2010 to 2011, and this occurred in build 7927 from the 14th of February 2011. Also from build 7927, we now have a semi-functional performance dashboard, which at least opens, which is more than it did in build 7899. Although some of the metrics here appear to be stuck with the CPU, for example, just displaying as 100%. Now, if you watched any of the earlier videos in the series, you may remember that Microsoft implemented a security feature in Windows 8 builds known as Red Pill to conceal features in the event of any builds getting leaked, and that to access these features, you need a tool to reconstruct the necessary files and permissions. The most famous is known as Redlock, and just like in the previous videos, I'll run this now, and once the machine has rebooted, we'll be able to take a look at these hidden features. Now, as I'm sure you may have noticed, the start screen opens on boot after Red Pill is circumvented, and this has been the case in all builds where it's been present, even though I've not explicitly mentioned it before, but you may have noticed it in previous videos as well. And infamously, this would also be the case in the final release of 8, with the option to boot straight to the desktop not reappearing until Windows 8.1 in 2013. And since we're on the start screen, let's have a look at what's changed here. And we've had a plethora of changes since the last build we looked at, which was build 789 including the background now being enabled by default which came in build 7927 we've now lost our date time and volume icons and just have our user picture and user name as would be the case in the final release of 8 tiles animate on mouse over as of this build which would again be the case in the final release of windows 8 albeit with a different and much more subtle animation tiles can also now be moved as again would be the case in the final release of 8 we also have new right click context menus for tiles with a new option for sharing this application link although at the moment this is not functional the context menus are currently blue and white which may indicate that they're following a particular accent color although i'm not 100 percent sure Additionally, a few changes I missed in the last video on build 7899 are that swiping up from the bottom of the start screen achieves the same thing as swiping down from the top, namely accessing search and the other programs view. And speaking of other programs, if you right click on an app here, you get an option to move it to start, which in effect pins it to the start screen. And again, this was present in build 7899 and this ability to pin apps would make the final release of Windows 8, albeit implemented slightly differently. And finally, the desktop tile, and apparently only the desktop tile, can be resized again as of build 7899, and you can choose between two different sizes, as would again be the case in the final release of 8. Elsewhere, we have a new lock screen background that shows up if you have the option to share your desktop wallpaper to the lock screen disabled, and again, this was also present in build 7899. We also have some new charms bar animations, which I love by the way, and also a more functional app switching UI that's introduced in this build. And at this point in development, you can also seemingly pin apps here. And since we're at the desktop, in Explorer with Red Pill, this build includes new dialogues for file operations, such as copying and pasting, which seems to have been introduced in builds around this time and which looks extremely similar to the final versions seen in Windows 8. We also have, curiously, a new applications shell location, which has very recently been traced back all the way to build 7779 from the 13th of July 2010, and which, as you may have guessed, lists all of the installed applications applications, except, again, curiously, the new immersive apps. Also curiously, before activating Red Pill in this build, this shell location is linked to from the start menu, where it's called MS Help, and also includes a link to MS Help, albeit a non-functional one. And just a quick reminder, in case you didn't watch the last video, but MS Help is actually the Windows Store, just with a different name, in an apparent attempt to try to stop people realizing what its true function was.
We've also by this point lost the new style folder icons that we first saw in build 7850 and have reverted back to the Windows 7 ones. And the new ribbon UI has had some changes such as a finalized paste icon and icon size picker. We've also had some updates to the new so-called immersive apps with settings now being renamed to control panel. Yes, I don't know why either. And some large UI changes in the PDF reader, which now has a whole interface with lots of buttons and options, which is nice to see. Finally, some minor UI changes in the Windows Store, aka MS Help, again all arriving in this build. We also have a multitude of changes to the new out-of-box experience in this build, including a new background, the introduction of Express Settings, known as Recommended Settings here, which would make the final release of 8, plus new buttons that fit in a lot better with Windows 8's new touch-optimized UI. And finally, two small changes are that the entry in the Windows Boot Manager for this build now calls it Windows 8 rather than Windows 7, and this seems to have first appeared in a development build of the Server Edition of Windows 8, i.e. Windows Server 2012, build 7965 from the 16th of March 2011. And we've also had a very minor update to the new Black Screen of Death that we first saw in build 7899 with some slight wording changes. And that's everything that I've discovered in build 7973 and as usual please let me know in the comments below if you found anything yourself in this build that I may have missed. If you enjoyed the video a thumbs up would be much appreciated. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.